So we started the company in 2006, initially three friends, that's me and Jonathan and Eric. So both Jonathan and I have computer science backgrounds, we're both programmers. Um, I did a slight focus on business, which is why for the project I haven't been working very much on the programming, but mostly on the business side. Jonathan's handling the technical side and supervising all those workers himself. Um, Eric worked in Sweden and has an industrial design background, so he did art and design of industrial products. and this. Uh, combined with his interest in games led to him uh, running our art department for us. And so since then we grew the company relatively slowly at first. I think by a couple of years in we had eight or ten employees and then it grew over time until we now have around 50 people working on Path of Exile. So before we started work on Path of Exile we'd been playing a lot of action RPGs online, games like Diablo, Diablo 2, Titan Quest, Dungeon Siege, and uh, <coughs> most, most of our the, the latter part of our teens was spent playing action RPGs like these. And in around 2006, when we started the project, there weren't really any new action RPGs that had online components. You know, I mean, Diablo 2 had come out in 2000, it had been six years, there was no sign of a sequel. And we thought what the market really needs right now is an action RPG with a really solid online component. And we figured we can make Path of Exile and have it out there before there are any other games of that type. And of course, it took seven years to make, and during that time, Diablo 3 was announced and came out. And thankfully, our game is different enough that people are very happy to play it. We're really pleased with the review scores as well, and I think one of the things that people enjoyed was the, cu the character customization possibilities. So in Path of Exile, you can build your character pretty much any way you want, and there's a lot of different game systems there that are very deep. For example, with active skills, you can combine them and support gems in many different ways. So you can have different skills triggering as your character does different things or gets hit in combat. And the passive system allows you to allocate hundreds of many, many thousands of passive skills. And this, uh, the combination of these two mean that you can kind of play the game differently than other people, and we see the reviewers really appreciating that in the reviews. I'm, I'm a fan of both the character customization and the atmosphere. Like, I like the fact that the game is scary, and you're walking around uncertain what monsters are in the next room, and there's kind of a sense of foreboding that the art department have created, and it's helped by having quite scary sound and other elements that make the game... It, it's a fun thing to play through, kind of alone with headphones, if you see what I mean. We've recently crossed 7 million registered players, and uh, in terms of online concurrency, I believe we announced that after our launch in Taiwan, we hit a peak of around 154,000 people playing internationally at the same time. So that was the, the, the high point on the Taiwan day and also on the, um, the international server. We played a lot of Diablo before making Path of Exile, and like any other g genre of games, there are quite a lot of consistent controls and themes between games like that. I mean, we look at first-person shooters, they all have the same controls and the same type of, you know, the way the ammo works and health works and that kind of thing. And this is true for a lot of different action RPGs, whether it's Path of Exile or Torchlight or Diablo. The genre, while it's evolving in different directions, certainly has a lot of tropes that are shared between those kind of games. Well, our priority is to make the game as fun as we possibly can. We, we also want the graphics to be as good as they can be, but we're potentially limited by the size of our team. I mean, we only have 50 people working on it. Uh, the game costs several million dollars to make, but certainly not as much as uh, AAA games that cost, you know, one or two hundred million dollars. And so we don't have the luxury of being able to throw a thousand artists at the product, but we'll try to make it look as good as we can within our constraints. We spend a lot of effort trying to optimize the game where we can, and there's a wide range of different computers that people play it on. And it's always a factor that people will find computers that are very not powerful and then want to make the game run on those. And so we have to put in optimizations to make it work better. And this is a constant thing that we keep having to fight against. And I'm sure in the coming years, while computers are getting more powerful, we'll find better ways to speed up the game on older ones, and that will eventually broaden it so almost any type of device can play the game. I have to say that I, I really enjoy action RPGs, which is partly why we made this. So Diablo 2 is probably my favorite game of all time. At least it's the game before Path of Exile that I'd spent the most time playing. Yeah, there's actually quite a wide variety of gaming tastes in the company. I mean, just today we were talking about how people have been playing the new Civilization Beyond Earth game, and some of our team have been playing the Legend of Grimrock 2 game that came out recently. That's a good game. But we generally find that when a new game comes out, you'll have three or four of the team playing that particular game, so you get to hear a lot of opinions. You know, For example, uh, one of our developers, Rory, spent some time playing the recent Borderlands pre-sequel that came out, and so even if we're not individually playing each of these games, we certainly hear a lot about them and get to see the cool bits. We have had some uh, Team Fortress evenings in the office before where we play some LAN games, and that's it's, it's quite a lot of fun. I mean, some of the team are much better at gaming than others, and I think there's a, an underground Quake community going on at the moment within the Quality Assurance Department. It's, it's something that, as we expand into Asia over time, I gradually want to increase my 
capabilities in Chinese, and it, it was useful when we released the traditional Chinese version of the game. While I'm only learning simplified characters, it is cool being able to actually see individual things that I recognize. So this was an observation that was made by playing other online action RPGs, right? Like I understand games like World of Warcraft, they give you gold, you grind up your gold and you spend it on things, but when we actually observed how people were playing action RPGs in particular, games like Diablo 2, we noticed that they weren't really using gold in those games. And the same was true for Guild Wars, for example. Trade soon became arbitrary things that players wanted to trade with each other rather than the actual units of gold. And we noticed that gold, because of this, wasn't really particularly useful in those games. You could occasionally buy some stuff from the vendors or get some potions. And we figured by changing how potions work anyway, and by introducing a much better vendor system with complicated recipes, that we could actually get rid of gold entirely and switch to other items that we designed to be traded. They're kind of like gold, but not really gold, if you see what I mean. And that's how our currency items came to being. It's kind of intentional that we do this because that way there's always a lot of debate about the value of something right like if you feel it's worth um let's say you're wanting to trade it for some currency items and by that i mean the items that like modify other stuff you know like orbs of alchemy or chaos orbs if you think that it's worth say five orbs of alchemy the other guy might value it at a different number and by having all of these different things you could potentially measure it in it means that there's a lot of disagreement between prices which is intentional because it creates interesting trades we don't like a system where you can look it up in the auction house and see that it's worth an exact amount of gold and that's what you're going to get, plus or minus a little bit. We like the idea for people to value items in different ways and for trades to occur at different prices. So we've been expanding into Asia through the publisher Garena Online, who are based in Singapore, and they helped us with our Taiwanese launch, and that went incredibly well. Much, much better than we were expecting, and I think better than they were expecting as well. So Path of Excel is very popular in Taiwan at the moment because of this. And we've also launched in Singapore and Malaysia with them. In order to release in mainland China, the game has to pass censorship. And this is a, for Path of Exile, this is a challenge because a lot of the content is currently um, probably a little uh, too violent for the censors. And so over time, we will be working on adapting the game very likely. And this is something we're looking into. I mean, it's a big project, but we're trying to find out what we would need to change in order to make it acceptable for that region. Choosing to not sell power things, as it were, definitely reduces the income stream a little bit. But on the other hand, it means that far more people are happy with the game. You get more users paying a little bit less each. And in some cases, they're still paying quite a lot because they're very generous. So we run, for example, supporter packs where you can spend one or two hundred dollars to purchase a bunch of um, microtransaction credits at the same time. And we find users are very generous with their purchases because they like to support us. And so it's worked out quite well. Um, it's certainly enough money to, to run the company and keep expanding the game over time. So we've been releasing expansions every few months. We've released two after the release around a year ago. In fact, I think the one-year anniversary of Path of Exile's release was yesterday. So we've released two expansions since then, and our third one is coming out in December. And that's a PvP-oriented one, so it's all about competitive play. So that's going to be really cool. And then early next year, maybe second very early in the second quarter of next year we'll be releasing our act 4 expansion so that's a large amount more content for the game and probably the biggest expansion we'll have done so far